in a time long forgotten. At the center of the universe exists Eternia, crux of life and power for all that was and all that ever will be. Only a few courageous souls stand in evil's way to prevent the complete fall of Grayskull. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Rod Bass, and I'm here with my friend Daniel Benedict. How you doing, Daniel? Great. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, I don't <laughs> have a name for anything we're doing right now. This is the first one we're doing, so uh, this is special. Special for you. Special you are for special. Me. Yeah. You're special. I, I think the problem is uh, we know each other a little too well, so this too is going to well. be a little bit of a different kind of interview. Uh, so basically, to start off, everyone needs to know why we're talking so we want to give a little bit of what what's happening currently uh currently um currently it's like in the middle of the night and everyone's asleep and i don't even sure what we're doing or why i'm even here <laughs> uh there's a kickstarter that i have going on uh for fall of gray skull Rise of the Horde which is a He-Man and She-Ra fan film sequel to the fan short film for He-Man that we did about a decade ago. And apparently you deem it important enough to talk to me about, which yeah. I'm honored. So, well, you've been promoting this like crazy, which is awesome. You've always, first of all, let's just get some things out of the way. Um, it's awesome to see you doing master stuff again. I mean, people talk about this all the time. Masters kind of, become very popular again i mean origins masterverse mattel and uh they didn't kill the line apparently so we're still here which is kind of cool to see <laughs> and i can't believe the fall of grayskull short film is a decade old is that for real a decade yeah we shot it in uh in 2014 and yeah I can't believe it either. I I feel a hundred years older, not just ten. <laughs> All right. So a couple of questions. It's uh for fans who are gonna be tuning into this who don't know, because we, you know, where I have no idea who knows you, who don't know you. Why should people care that you're doing a fan film for Masters? Uh, I I'm just gonna address He-Man fans or She-Ra fans because mm -hmm. if you're not, then you may not care at all. But <laughs> Um, but maybe you, maybe you would, um, so, uh, you would care maybe because He-Man has only been done officially live action once mm -hmm. in 1987. Um, She-Ra has never been done official, officially live action. Um, there's been, uh, fan films and, and our fan film, um, but, uh, this one should if if we get funded uh actually it will uh, blow everything out of the water uh especially or at least uh blow the first fall of gray out of the water um that, that's the goal and I, I i think that it it will because uh, i know that it will because we've gotten way better in the last 10 years you know i know who you are i know the stuff you've done I'm so sorry. for the Masters fans, uh, talk a little bit about your Masters connection. Uh, let's see. So um, uh, Castle Grey Skull Man, I, that, I won the Mattel Creative Character Contest a long time ago. Um, and there's that, which is the coolest thing still that's that's ever happened to me, I feel like. Um, still surreal. Um, let's see, uh, you and I were both on, uh, roast Google dinner, yeah. he podcast for years. Yeah. Uh, I've have been on the PowerCon staff for years. Um, I've, uh, my YouTube channel is filled with, uh, fun content, but really heavy on the, the He-Man side, uh, uh, I've done some like um, uh, influencer videos <laughs> or like uh, for uh, games for he, a He-Man game. 
Um, and yeah, and then we did Fall of Grayskull, the, the fan film uh, back in 10 years ago. And, uh, and yeah, and I'm just an obsessed, crazy person that for some reason just keeps, uh, you know, loving He-Man and She-Ra, even though I'm, you know, past middle-aged. We're in the middle of middle age. We're not we're not past it yet. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm not going to live too much longer, probably. So I'm... <laughs> you can't go anywhere right now. Um, you have a film to make right I'm, now. I'm I'm, ha I'm halfway to eighty eight. So yeah, we all are. We're halfway to somewhere. Uh, so okay. First, I want to talk about Full of Gray Skull. And uh, I remember when you worked on it, you made it and it came out. We watching it at Paracon, and because uh, you did show it at PowerCon, which is how I got to see it first. So 2016, I think you showed it. I think it was 2016 one, right? I think it was. Something like that. Something like yeah. that. I feel like it was sometime with 2016 or 2017. Might be 2017 because yeah. Brian was there and, and Johnny but, Bilson. Oh, it was 16 because no, 15... Yeah, or six, it was 16 because 15, there wasn't no. a PowerCon. And we kind of like, instead of... I mean, it's not a replacement for PowerCon, but we, we did that Chicago triple threat signing slash screening slash fun time. Okay. Thing. So one of the things I've always wanted to ask you, I don't think we've ever talked about this. Okay. Let's talk about the cast who you currently have working for the new film. Uh, what I always wonder, how did you get Brian Cage in 2014? Like uh, I knew who he was because I watched Lucha Underground. I watched a lot of indie wrestling. Uh, guys, if you know who Brian Cage is, he's currently an AEW wrestler. He's wrestling for about, 15, 16 years. Uh, he plays He-Man in the Full of Grey Skull. And I just never asked you, like, how did that connection come about? Uh, yeah, so when we were gathering up um, all the parts for that, I wanted, you know, definitely somebody that looked the part that, you know, he, he had to be uh, He-Man, had had the He-Man physique. And we were, were originally going to film it on the West Coast because most of the people involved at the beginning were out there, and it just made sense. Uh, and I, I just I started researching and and looking everywhere I could for somebody like that that might be interested. And I I remember like researching some gyms there and and bodybuilding competitions and stuff like that and then i was like hmm i wonder if there's any like wrestlers or any wrestling promotions out there and so i was googling that and i found one guy in one wrestling promotion that fit the bill that could pull it off in my opinion visually and it was brian so i reached out to him and i was like hey um do you want to be he man and he was like yes <laughs> basically <laughs> sure uh you know um short story but yeah that's that's how it all started all right so you actually didn't even know him you had no connection you just took a shot in the dark pretty much yeah that's that's a good metaphor for everything we do i just take a chance it can't hurt right what's it gonna do say no yeah uh, so all right obviously in the original fall gray skull was darker it had a lot more uh horror elements and uh you just i noticed in your campaign you talked about how you're gonna lighten it like are you still gonna have some more I mean, well, I'll give anything away, obviously. Are we going to have elements that are still kind of harken back from the original Fall of Grey Skull, or are we just kind of going like, no, nah, let's just go this way? I mean, I definitely, for continuity's sake, it, it'll definitely be a true sequel. I, I've always, uh, I couldn't stand it when like movie sequels like didn't like pick up where the other ones left off or something. Like, why is Jason's hockey mask different in this one, you know? <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, but but the tone will definitely be different. Uh, it it will have humor and fun, and I mean, it'll still have stakes and serious battles and 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 stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's not going to be like um, everybody's getting like their heads blasted off in a dark castle for thirty minutes. You know, yeah. I I I was looking at the uh, the campaign video. Uh, guys, I'll leave a description in the description below. I'll leave a, a link to the Kickstarter, obviously. Um, I was watching the video and we were just getting such a kick out of just like seeing the costumes and like that 
they look amazing. I mean, even the original one, they looked amazing. And now I feel like Thanks. you've upped that game. Can you talk about the people working behind with the costumes and stuff? Uh, yeah, so um, definitely up the costume game, which is awesome and important. And we're lucky and blessed to have everybody doing it. Um, like, I'd have to pull up. I'm afraid I'd leave somebody out. I need to pull up, like, the, the credits here. But, uh, um, of course, Johnny Bilson did a lot. Uh last time and this time uh matt o'toole man at arms hordak uh, i mean absolutely amazing like yeah, it, it looks gorgeous yeah. um uh kevin coppa chris stark uh cassie and myself a little bit um yeah dude i'm i'm gonna offend like, well, like the main... everyone knows you're just kind of promoting it. We don't like <laughs> there's a full yeah. casting credits when the movie's made <laughs> and they can get all the yeah. <laughs> we would talk about like um I, but I... yeah, but but so many people like and yeah, and just like uh just the amount of like weapons or you know, it's, it's just one little piece of a costume. It's just like it's amazing, like yeah, that I got so many people to to say okay to this. I'm I'm still flabbergasted as to why, but thank you. I, I think it's cool because like I remember when we were covering PowerCon and you'd see like a cosplayer in like a like full Hordak outfit or the merman outfits and you'd be like, I need to talk to you. <laughs> like you're like <laughs> you always like I sit on the back and that like, glimmer in your eye, you're always like, I, I want to do something with that. So now in the campaign video, you were talking about that the process has been slow and it's just like just a the, what you have in the for the, on Kickstarter is just a uh like a proof of concept or are we using some of that footage actually in the movie? Um, probably shoot everything over. Uh, yeah, this was just a mock-up. I mean, it, I mean, it's not like, I mean, these are definitely like elements and scenes and and stuff that will be in the movie, but probably just for consistency and quality, we'll probably uh, shoot it all um, fresh. Now, as of recording, I haven't checked the Kickstarter today. How how far you got so far? I don't know. Let's let's look and see. Almost 27, 26, 705. So it's it's slowly getting up there. Now, is the movie have to be at that fundraising level, or is it that we can get close enough and just still make it? Or how how you feel you want to go about that? Well, Kickstarter is all or nothing. So we either get it and make it, or we don't and don't. So, which would be sad because I think, I think this movie uh, deserves to be made. Not, not by me specific, or I don't deserve it, but I'm just saying like, you know, He-Man and She-Ra need live action, need a, a good, a good stab at it. Now, why did you decide to do a full length instead of not just another short film? Um, I'm insane. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, just you know, um, go all out, go big, and and do it right, and not uh, yeah, just do a full story. That, that I mean, that's, I mean, you know, the there's a lot of story to tell. I mean, I mean, there's, I mean, you know that uh, Masters has and Shira have, um, I mean, just an insane amount of characters and content and 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 stories like we could do like 20 of these movies and still like have fun stuff to tell. So like, yeah, you know, 30 or 40 minutes isn't going to cut it. We need, we need like a hundred minutes, two hours at least. Don't you think? I, I why not? I mean, just make it a whole like HBO <laughs> series. It's fine. <laughs> I'd watch it. Um, so I saw your, Spotify is now up with the cover of the power of love. What a power of love. That's Huey Lewis. Uh, I, I, have, I have, the have the power. I have the power. <laughs> she think power of love next. And it's, uh, <laughs> uh, but okay. I'd, I'd love to. That'd be awesome. <laughs> what made you decide to do that? Like, that's funny to me. Um, I mean, I've always like, uh, been in bands, you know, I've had several bands over the years and I've, I've have like, tons a lot of people don't know that about me They're like i from like 95 through 2000 
10 i've i have like man a, a lot of original albums like full albums of original music but anyway um you haven't done that in a while and uh and of course you know th th this is a story about you know adora becoming shira so a lot of secret of the sword which is the 85 animated movie um elements and that's the that was the theme song to to that movie and uh just thought it was appropriate um to uh just uh, i was trying to think of um different ways to to get attention to the kickstarter to promote it and so i have like a list of like oh we need this type of video and this type of video and th and that was one of them and uh and then once we we did it and it turned out so well i'm like um i was like yeah let's put this on streaming so uh So we, we had the license to actually like sell that song on whatever platform or whatever to do the cover, uh, you know, of it. Mm. So I'm, uh, I'm proud of it. I think it turned out great. Like, uh, uh, Jonathan who does the music and Tuesday that does, uh, the, you know, the, the female vo vocals and, uh, and, uh, my, my friend Jared, who like made it sound like a real song, uh, no, it, it came out, it. it came out fantastic. Like, Yeah. So but um go ahead. I want I want to talk about music with you because I just showed my wife all your old songs that you have available on YouTube. And uh Oh no. <laughs> oh yeah, we did because Chris was like, Oh, he sings great. I'm like, you know, he's done music before. She's like, Really? I'm like, Yeah, yeah, yeah hold on. And I went through and I would show him all your, your videos and I'm like, I it's so funny because like to me when I hear your songs, I'm thinking more like tool. like a uh, perfect circle style of singing, like that Maynard, very similar uh, style. And to see you sing like the He-Man and Shira <laughs> song, it's like, it's, that's a range. It was, it was hard. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I get what you said about uh, what I sound like that. I get that a lot um, or I have. And, uh, but yeah, singing like a pop song was harder Um So in the, in the music video, I'm like singing at a studio, but I actually recorded it in my garage, like, you know, three o'clock in the morning, uh, into some old, uh, crib mattresses with like the lyrics taped up to it and <laughs> in the corner. Um, but it, it took me, uh, I, I spent several hours or I spent months and months like in my car, like constantly driving, like trying to get the harmonies and like, there was, it, wasn't like it's not an easy song or at least not for me um it's it's it sounds simple but it's it's kind of not but anyway um yeah and I, I i got all those vocals done and sent to jared and he was like hey can you do it again <laughs> and i was like oh, okay so i went back and did it another time and and uh just because like that's just not my typical style um so yeah i'm not great but i'm not good but he made me sound good and uh yeah well being a lead singer for a band and doing a duet is completely different so that's credit right there because you know you have to match your vocals with tuesday as well so you're not drowning each other out so there's a whole level to that and i think it's a genius idea to do that just to promote the the, <laughs> the kickstart i think it's a that's i love it um Thank so you. i love you I, I, absolutely <laughs> um Let's let's talk about Rob Lamb and his involvement. Yeah, so um, Rob and Sean uh, became friends with him from uh, PowerCon, like the very first PowerCon I went to. One, like the first one of the first people I met was uh, was Rob Lamb, and just super super nice guys and uh, and very talented guys and. Uh, And I, I guess if people don't know, uh, watching this, that Rob Lamb uh, worked at Filmation back in the 80s and wrote for He-Man and She-Ra and a lot of other uh, shows, uh, Brave Star, and, and Sean wrote for Brave Star, too. And the, um, she's a an author of fantasy books. And, uh, like, yeah, they, they are legit writers. So... Um, <laughs> I would be a fool not to have somebody like like them involved. And they they actually moved 
uh, kind of just down the road from me um, a couple of years ago. And uh, so, so yeah, like um, I, I would be dumb to not, not go over to their house and be like, Hey, watch this trailer. Do you want to write this? And be like, <laughs> So wait, did you actually have the trailer ready and show it to them? Is that what you did or? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I had the outline of the story. I've had it for years. Uh, I've tweaked it and, and uh, we picked specific shots to tell kind of a mini story in the trailer or whatever. And, um, I, uh, and, and Rob and Sean are completely super busy. They're booked like, like they're at conventions and stuff like all the time. Um, and so uh, I caught him one day and I was like, hey, I was like, let me like do a presentation of like what I'm trying to do. And I, I kind of told him about everything and showed him what I had at that point. And I was like, are you, would you guys be interested? And they, and they were gung ho and they were like, yes. And, and uh, so I'm honored to have, uh, the likes of them involved. So besides Rob Lamb, yourself, uh, who else has been helping you out, like to help get this out there? Like, you know, I mean, obviously your wife, but she's a part of everything you do. I know that. So dude, so many people, like if, if you watch uh, that trailer at the end, there's yeah. like a couple, a couple screens of, of yeah. names. I saw that. Um, yeah, like just uh, let me just say, just go look at that because I, I can't just sit here and, and list mm -hmm. a thousand names, but like so many people, like people that that were involved in the in the first, um, the first film, and just uh, my friends, family, um, lots of Motu uh, fan people, like and also uh, like just down to like little things, like oh here, um, like here's some like artwork or here's some here's like a, a laser gun or you know just like every little thing you can imagine yeah look, look at those look at those names because uh lots of awesome people that can do a lot of awesome things that i can't so now did you seriously sell your whole classics collection just to do this <laughs> um pretty much uh the all of the stuff that was um in the package still so i i uh Back when we were doing that, back in that long run of classics, which was from like 08 to what? When did it stop? To 2015, 2016? No, no, 2017. Seven, yeah, 17. They went over uh, to Super 7, yeah. Super 7 and those those last waves there. Mm -hmm. What was the very last thing? Do you remember what it was? Was it a vehicle? Was it like the Roton? or Roton was the last vehicle that they did. And then, uh, and then it was maybe, yeah, but... Um, but yeah, so I, from that whole, whole, uh, we can sit here and, <laughs> and nerd out on classics. I, I would love to talk about that. Um, yeah, so I, I tried to, I supported the line definitely and it selfishly as, as well. Um, I tried to get, I tried to get to everything never happened because like, it, I, you know, who can do, who could pull that off? But, um, I did manage to have pretty much everything still like on the card or in a box um and most of those there are a few special ones that i that i've kept um like some powercon exclusives and stuff but everything else was uh kind of out the door um and man like selling stuff on ebay um is sucks is yeah it's it's a it's a whole it's a whole job and like yeah <laughs> um I don't know a lot of people like uh, don't like eBay, but like I I don't I don't I don't have like a seller's brain or anything, so I don't know how to like do that sort of thing. So anyway, I just took the easy way out and and sold all that stuff and and yeah, um, it's sad. I, I I don't even think about it, <laughs> but I do I, we do, I do still have a lot of uh, or a, a a handful or an armful of of loose loose uh, classics that um, me and my kids play with sometimes. All right. So I just keep going back to the idea that 10 years later, you wanted to do a full length He-Man movie. And the fact that everybody who was in the original one, for the most part, who's, I, I guess, I guess it's not a spoiler for a 10 year old short film, but uh, not everyone can technically come back. 
Uh, because, yeah. <laughs> so some <laughs> didn't make it at the end of the movie. So yeah, yeah, the bad guys from uh, or I guess not all the bad guys die. So yeah, so Skeletor and Triclops and Evil and the mm -hmm. the evil warriors yeah. uh, are deceased. Um, but the horde is there. You know, Shadow Weaver comes back. Uh, you know, there's the tease yep, at yep. the at the end of of the, the Doctor Claw Hordak. Um, but yeah, um, no, they can't come back. But uh, the sorceress, uh, she's she's back, even though she she's dead technically. But uh, but like in a post that I, I posted recently, like. Why can't we do flashbacks? Why can't we? Uh, why can't she be a ghost? Because she, I mean, she is because she helps Tila, you know, transition uh, into the sorceress and uh, finding herself. <laughs> she's yeah. she's on a soul search. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, but and, but Johnny Billson, who is Triclops, um, is back as uh, a thousand horde troopers, and <laughs> uh, and if if we if we make this goal, Mantena. So wow. he's 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 already been working on the uh, and we're talking like a mostly practical Mantana too, and he's been working on that. I, if you guys don't know Johnny Bilson, uh, just just know that he's he's a character. <laughs> he's really talented. Uh, the guy is super talented, and if you when you watch, go watch the visual flow, Grace, which is on your YouTube channel. In full, uh -huh. he's a genius. What are you talking yeah. about? He's a great guy. I love him. Uh, he, he uh, his trap, his triclops, which is like one of the best things I've ever seen. The the voice he did for it and how he made it his own, really like brought a lot of character, a lot of depth to what your your short film did. So, and I think that gave it a lot more personality too. Like you know, uh, I've seen a lot of short fan films. You just lost one. Like it's like a million Batman ones out there. There's a million whatever, and and it's always missing that. Uh, personal touch it, you have to have that feeling that yeah i recognize these characters but i also need to you have to put your own stamp on it and i when i watch full of gray school on like any other the, i'm not knocking anyone's master's films but i'm just saying when i'm ever watching full of gray school going that's made by a person who's a professional like this is not like made by like a fan and with all due respect uh, now I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about you like this now. Uh, I know you for a long time, but like I'm gonna be very real. Everything you've ever worked on, all your films, when you look at it without even hearing any dialogue or seeing any storyline, you feel like you're watching someone who really knows their trade, really well, and that's what very few fan films can say for themselves. I know you don't like to take compliments, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm I'm getting I'm getting better. I'm slowly getting better. Um, maybe I, I don't I don't know if I would like. I almost don't want people to watch the first Fall of Grey Skull just because like uh, there's so many things that I I don't like about it now. It's almost to a million views though. Almost. It's ten. It's a ten year old short I film know. that you first that you fully funded on Kickstarter as well. How many views does it have? Let's see. Ooh, nine hundred and ninety five thousand one hundred and eight. Come on, guys, let's well, get us over. Hopefully after this, it will we'll get more people to watch it. Uh, first, I definitely think people should watch it. It's great. I, you get to see the blood, sweat, and tears you put into it. Uh, also, knowing behind the scenes, knowing the people like Hordak's voice and uh, and everyone who's in it and getting to really get to learn who they are. Obviously, we have to thank PowerCon for most of that, too, because like uh, that fan base, the He-Man fan base is pretty amazing. And right now, with Origins and with uh, Masterverse and all the new stuff that's happening, the Mondo stuff, San Diego Comic Con just happened, and like I, I keep saying, like, where, where, where's Toy Guru? Toy Guru saying that the line was going to die and, and and fall off me while Masters is bigger than ever, crossovers galore. So a lot more eyes are coming on to everything that's He Man. And I think, honestly, this is a perfect time to do a sequel, even though it's been 10 years. Uh, but let's be real. Brian Cage is not aged. He looks exactly, <laughs> the guy looks the same, uh, which is awesome. Is it anything for the film? Okay, let's say you reach your your goal. When Not if, when you reach your goal. <laughs> do you have anything above and beyond that, like planned in your head, if you reach more than the, was 250? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a whole. I have a slew of of uh, 
stretch goal graphics all waiting in the wings, ready to go. Um, but you know, I don't want to put those out there now. Oh no, no. My my question is more about like, all right, you reach more money. What would you use for that towards the film? Um lots of things like uh more insane rewards like way insane rewards uh but also like more characters more locations more vehicles you know just uh everything uh bigger and better um but uh but two 250k will get us like a really really awesome feature uh motu film and uh Princess of Power film. Okay, so with that being said, we have uh, in your first film you did lots of green screen, obviously, because you had to, for the most part. For, and I remember you yeah. talking about that you weren't very excited about using green screen. Uh, was it that because you wanted it to be more practical, or um, it's just yeah, it it's hard sometimes, and it's just you know, it's 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 really easy to like uh, to 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 look at and be like oh yeah that's green screen or, um it's a fantasy movie yeah no kidding it's, it's like, <laughs> but no it, it was just hard like every single shot was like a composited shot you know and it was it took forever and uh and it's just i don't know I, the more real life locations the more sets uh just the better production value you know the more realistic the, the you know the nicer it looks the better it's going to feel um so yeah i mean obviously we're gonna have to do some green screen uh and we did in the trailer too but you know but definitely a lot more definitely weighing heavier on the the, the real world location slash set side now do you have time. a list of places you like have in your mind that go be local for you are you going to go have to travel like bring the, the crew with you yeah the, yeah there's there's some travel involved um we uh we live in Kentucky and there's a lot of really cool places all around the state um uh but yeah but there's also um sp awesome places out west that that are on the list uh and uh, yeah it's going to be it's going to be epic so like you have like a shot list kind of in your head or written down that you kind of like know I want this for this area that for that area or uh, I mean kind of like scenes like okay there's this there's this one part it would be cool to shoot it here and you know nothing like official right it's uh, still like, early yet we you don't want to yeah. delve too far in um anything you want to tell the people who are going to watch this to like maybe convince them a little bit more to like okay yeah I'm giving you my money uh, please. Um, <laughs> Besides begging on your hands and knees, because that always works, you know. Yeah. Um, like I think there's a lot of people that love He Man and She-Ra. Um, it's it's the best fan base of all fandoms, in my opinion. And that's just not, that's I'm not just saying that. Like I've been around them for a long time, and um, online and in person and so i know that this movie will do right by them and they will enjoy it and love it and it will be like a special thing to them um i'm i'm yeah i i, I don't want to sound like egotistical when i'm saying this i'm just i'm, I'm trying to be um confident maybe <laughs> or, or uh or reassuring um and like, and yeah, so it's, it's something that in and of itself, I feel like deserves to be made, um, for fans. Um, and, and I, you know, and there's always been, you know, for the past like quarter of a century, you know, talks of, you know, the Hollywood He-Man film, um, you know, you know draft after script after director after studio you know and and, and you know and it, it make this this last you know news uh of it may become a reality um but like it's you know it's very hard and i'm sure it'll be awesome uh no you know if it does happen but like this is this different this is different this is fan made this is like there's no um 
you know, evil corporate empire, like, you know, <laughs> with all, like, you know, we, we have to do, you know, it this way or that way, or, you know, it, it, it doesn't need to follow anything. It, it, this can be true to masters, you know, in every way it, to, to the lore that's come before, to the, the characters, their appearances, their personalities, the people's, the characters, the places like this can be, like total like nerd fan uh just yes um yeah Does that makes sense it Maybe? makes no it makes perfect sense because like, i'm just i'm, I'm saying like vomiting a bunch of stuff no that's right also people have to understand it's like uh one o'clock in the morning for me so it's like 12 ish for you <laughs> yeah it's yeah. a little past midnight 12, yeah but uh it's true what you're saying because we have being part of the Rose Scribble Dinner podcast over the years, we've interviewed countless directors, writers, people like, oh, this is happening. We're going to talk. And we, I, I think we talked to three different head writers who were working on the project, and then they all disappeared. Masters is a hard sell, I think, for mainstream. I think um, it, it, it has such easy possibilities to get over nowadays masters of the universe if you go with the filmation style had the 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 youth of kids the, the childlike wonderment the 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 what the only filmation can do everything is very bright very colorful very cute the comics could be more serious there's no wrong way to take masters like that's what's so great the core characters can go in any direction and you can still make a good masters film uh as fans for us and what we loved about fall of gray skull it's like, yeah, you said you picked out Brian Cage. You picked out the biggest guy you could find to legitly look like He-Man. And I think that's what's really cool is like, you know, uh, you're looking at it, especially the thing in the trailer and the new trailer for the for the Kickstarter is that one scene where they're in the grass. And it's He-Man, Man-at-Arms, and it's Tila. <laughs> and it's right from the card back. I just think that's yeah. like, that's something only a fan film can do. Like, I'm going to give you that shot. Like a lot of movies that are big budget will try to do that. Uh, the, the Ben Affleck Daredevil tried to do the cover of uh, one of the comics where he's on top of the church. It's like, yeah, I right, gave me, you gave me one. It was kind of pointless. <laughs> but like the whole film, as you look into it, you see the story, but you can also see it. Oh, I recognize that. I recognize that, and the fans know it. Um, I really feel that right now, like you know, when we get this out to the new fans. There's a lot of new fans. It's a lot of young kids. Uh, and people who just didn't know about like we came in back with classics and like getting really evolved and that community was a very set community now with origins and stuff that's more retail based a lot of the people who didn't even know classics existed have come into the he-man world and like they're soaking in all of that uh stuff that we had like over a decade of enjoyment already like like you said mm -hmm. from classics in 2008 we went that's our stuff and we like it was like right into your veins and i just see that <laughs> on all the facebook groups i see that with all the new fans like they're our age maybe a little bit younger but they're like oh my god i remember this and like they're getting into it and they want and, and the questions you always hear like when are they going to make a movie when are they going to make a movie and it's like oh here we go like we're going to make the movie we donate the money you film it we're going to have all these people and I think that's really, that's only something you can do by making a fan film. I hate using a fan film. I hate that term. I mean, we're fans. I get it. But like, yeah, I just wish that wasn't a term because like, I know you as a director. You've done countless movies. You literally just wrapped up a horror movie that took you a couple of years to do, which was The Bloody Man. And you kickstarted that. You had funds for that. You did everything for that. I know that took a lot out of you to make that movie. That was a <laughs> yeah. I, I saw you like talk to me like and we'd like you would be like, I'm almost done. It's like and you get it and you're working on it. And it's beautiful because it's a passion project, and so I know the caliber of work that's going into it, and I hope uh, that the fans, the new fans, go watch. I know you don't want them to watch Full of Grace. <laughs> they kind of have to because it's the prequel. I mean, it's it's the yeah. first part. Well, well, I appreciate your kind words, first of all. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah, I guess you kind of have to watch it. Uh, yeah, watch it with with the disclaimer of this is a long time ago and far away, and 
no money and it's not even about that it looks good even for that time frame you gotta understand that like all green screen except for maybe one or two scenes that you shot with the sorceress obviously which which was like in action. oh yeah yeah, yeah there's like yeah the, the the young young tila it's young tila and then the yeah. uh I'm not spoiling it, the death of Sorceress, because you already, we already talked about she's a ghost. In your well, that was green screen. <laughs> that was what? Yeah, that was one of the better results. Yeah, that was green screen. I thought that was out in the field. Like, hey, the I tricked you. Yes. Now, that's See? a compliment. <laughs> now, I really thought that was one of the shots that you did outside. outside. That was pretty crazy. See, look at oh. So you see, you see, even to now, I thought those scenes were real. Like they weren't <laughs> a green screen. So take it for what it is. Um I'm super excited for this. And I was so shocked that when this is kind of like dropped out of nowhere, like, did you not tell like people online? Like, am I just not noticing things? Or well, leading up to it? Yeah. No, I'm the type of guy that like, I want to like get everything ready. And then I'm just like, you know, I, I, uh, I, I just wanted to like, just drop it all at once. Just kind of like a bomb. Um, kind of felt so like, like it's, so yeah. So anybody, the only people that knew were just like the people that were just on set or like making something. Uh, and even like then, like some people maybe didn't even realize exactly what, what I was even asking. Um, just, I don't know, just because like uh, I just wanted like the initial um, interest to like be the biggest it can be. And But if, if I was like just posting stuff along the way, um I just feel like it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Like, oh, that's oh, Daniel's doing. You know, there's another one of those characters he's doing again. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I told nobody, and uh, and it, you know, it's you know, with life, with job, kids, family, and uh, and everything, like it, and and no budget, biggest thing. Um, it took you know a long time to put this together, um, and uh, a lot of like lunch breaks sitting at like Taco Bell, compositing a, you know, Roboto getting shot at by like 50 horde troopers, tiny in the background. Um, so yeah, it, it took a while. It took almost, we started this, we started talking about it like during the pandemic. It was, uh, it was like 2020, I got the idea. I was like, okay, let's do this for real. Then like 21, I was like zooming everybody like we are now. And be like, hey, let's get the band back together. And then it took, you know, then we didn't shoot anything for a year. Then we shot the first stuff in 22 and then here and there. And then finally, um, yeah, so it's it's taken a long time. Um, and had I started talking about this three years ago, I don't think anybody would care by this point. Yeah, it's true. So like, that's so funny because when we walk around PowerCon the last time I went um, and you were looking at the props and you look at the cosplayers. It wasn't just like, oh, that's cool. You had mentioned, so <laughs> you like you whispered some things to yourself while I was there with you. And I'm like, I think he, I think he wants to do something. I was like, but I didn't think it was going to be a feature. And like, that's, I give you all the credit in the world for that. Like I would have been like, we could do a five minute commercial. Uh, that's the best I'm going to give you. <laughs> Put hundred characters, five minute commercial. We're going to sell two brushes and then it just go. And, uh, <laughs> Hey, yeah. that'd be cool. I'd do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, do you have anything like right now you could be working on towards helping uh, more eyes get onto the Kickstarter? You're going to be doing more songs or any kind of little shorts? Um, yeah. I mean, we have, I have a video to post every Monday. Um, not another song, but just like different types of videos. Like, uh, you know, I think this coming Monday, I'm going to post like a vlog video of, of one of the shoots that we did. Um so yeah, uh, you know, and 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 talking to you, and and I have uh, another guy wanting to to talk um, at some point, and then uh, my friend Jason that that owns a game store here in town uh, had me come and do a do a funny skit, and I think I'm going to do another one with him, and uh, and he blew me away. Like I didn't I didn't realize going into that skit that he was going to donate five grand on the spot. I was like, what? That, that shocked me. I thought it was just part of the, I thought it was yeah. part of the skit that he wrote. And I was like, Oh, he really did. So, um, yeah, that so guy, yeah. He, he's pretty big on YouTube. I've seen him for a while. So it's kind of cool that you got like, uh, like, especially like on that end, you could, you could bring like, all right, there's a toy store guy. You got the, the video game store guy, you know, 
Uh, are you planning to do anything with Pixel Dan guys like that? Do you have anything? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't talked to him since I launched this. I wonder what he thinks about it. He may not even know about it. The guy's so busy with, with, you know, Comic Con yeah. and and stuff. Yeah. I need to text him and be like, "What's up?" You gotta, you gotta do a part four of your uh, crossover thing from all Man, those years ago. Like that's really my dream is to do a. It was a part three. Is to part do like three. part th Dan versus Dan mm -hmm. part three. I've. I literally have had that written out maybe even before <laughs> this, this, like, I, yeah, but. I mean, yeah. it probably had to, coming close to the crunch time for the Kickstarter, doing that little crossover. <laughs> Can't hurt, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, exactly. So any last words before we end this? Uh, last words. Um, Fallofgrayskull.com links you straight to the Kickstarter. Um, like I've probably put collectively, I may have put more work into this trailer and campaign, uh, and time into this than maybe anything else, any other single thing, which is crazy to think because that bl the bloody man, like it, you know, it took many parts of my soul that'll never come back. Uh, cause it was so, such an, a long thing but um but yeah so like so the amount of work that so and not not just me like so many people have put so much time i say this a lot you know even with other projects but like especially this time so many people have like donated time and money and just you know their skills their their art you know artistry and everything into this um like it's like i would be devastated if if we didn't uh, uh get to make it which i mean I, I, obviously that is a possibility but I, I feel like that everybody has spent so much time and work on it that like um it's it needs to be made what do you think absolutely i mean <laughs> i <laughs> Listen, we gotta do the Kevin Smith type thing. We'll max out a bunch of credit cards. We <laughs> just, just, it just make it happen. Uh it's just that it's so cool to see this and the people involved. I think that's important for people to say guys like Rob Bland being involved, uh bringing back guys like you know Brian Cage, Johnny Bilson, people that we know personally, seeing that array of talent that you pulled in. The people first out, that shows who you are as a person, that all these people wanting to help you willing to work with you and with no guarantee that this can even happen that's cool i mean that's a level of like respect and i think that's a lot of trust they put on to you which i think is a good character uh i feel at the end of the day that you know i'm wanting this to be not just a success but i want it to be that to prove that the fan base can pull together you know uh, you've done it in the past with everything you've done, but now we're asking for more. And that's, it's 2024, guys. Everything's more expensive. Give up the money. You know, you, you did your taxes. Just donate that straight to the fund. Right? <laughs> Everyone just do that. Uh, everyone sell your classics, apparently. You don't need them. <laughs> sell them to somebody else. You know, I think there's probably one guy who's buying up all the classics from everybody and just donate all that. Um there were a couple of repeat customers on on eBay that were buying a lot, so that yeah, there's a couple guys out there that have a big chunk of, of mine, which is fun. Classics, are just you know, people are learning about the classics now, which is cool. like I said, because of the fan base, all new. There's people coming in and learning, and that's the fan base we want to reach right now. I wanna I wanna talk to those guys and say, look, you know, you're new to the fan base. But you might have been it, it might be part of your childhood, and you forgot about it, and now you're back. This is something. We could all do together. Watch the. I, I implore people to go to the Kickstarter, check it out, watch the trailer, watch it. Also, go to you know, <laughs> to his, go to Red Serial Films. Right, you have a YouTube channel for that. You have well, the, well, the YouTube channel is uh, is just fresh Danny B. Yeah, with three with three ends. Yeah, I know you gotta do something about that. You need to <laughs> definitely. Yeah. But it's but, been that way for years. I don't want to be changing. Know. <laughs> it's a lot of work to change a name. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't talk alternative minds I've had since 1994. There's a Z at the end of it. You know, it shows that's, you what that's you awesome. Yeah. But, right. um, no, it's not. It's terrible. Uh, 
<laughs> but it's just the idea that like you know go watch the trailer go watch fall of gray skull go see what you've done before check out it, he, you're out there your stuff is out there for people to see to know what you do and i feel that you know once people see it they'll get behind it and to know who you are i want people to go watch the crossovers you've done with pixel dan uh the the power con everything you see at power con that was filmed from 2018 16 whatever all the conventions that was all him everything was and you help you right there with me you're the one editing you did one did all of it you did all of that i was just there going oh, it doesn't sound right uh we gotta wait a <laughs> second there's a plane yeah great job rob uh <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just really excited and I'm so happy this has happened. I think it's I think this is a good time now. I, just because of the level of interest in Motu that we haven't had. Let's be real. When you did the first film, we only had classics. And you did that. And that was a that's an achievement. What you got everything for that. You know, I don't know what's going on with PowerCon for the future, but I know that for right now. We have an online community. There's a million Facebook groups. There's a million everything out there. So, guys, the description will have everything for the Kickstarter, the website, everything you need to know to get everything going. And for you to donate money. It's summertime. You don't need to go to the beach. The beach is over. It's already August. Now you got to think about <laughs> back to school. And best thing for back to school is donating money for full grade school rise <laughs> of the horde. All right, guys, I want to thank you. I want Daniel, thank you so much for hanging out at like 1 30 in the man. morning for me here. This is great. Uh, guys, check it out. And and I'm telling you, you're going to be excited. We're excited. And uh, if you're a wrestling fan, you got Brian Cage is in it. So you already got this crossover fan base is everywhere. So there's, there's a lot to it. If you're a horror fan, Tuesday night from Nightmare on Street Part 4 is in it. I, I still, it's still amazing how she's. We could talk later about that. It's so amazing to see all that. There's a lot of great stuff, guys. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching this. And uh, until next time, take it easy. Thank you.